Hey everyone, it's Alex and I had some FOMO. I've been watching a lot of uploads recently of people doing the mid-year book freakout tag, which I know is a booktube staple. So I thought, just like in my last video, I'd mention probably at some point uh, around this time of year where I'd just give an update about my reading. And as a surprise to myself too, I have read at least 50 books, so I feel pretty okay doing this tag because uh, maybe earlier in the year I wasn't sure even if I would have read this much, um, I say is I haven't read anything in the past couple of months. But other than my reading, if you care about my personal life at all, the past few months I've just been hanging out, um, or really I should say until March, uh, or since March, because I haven't uploaded since then. Spending a lot of time with friends and family uh, so far this summer, which is great, and plan to do it a few more times throughout the summer too, which is really good for me because all these good things happening, uh, right after going through probably the most tumultuous relationship I've ever had in my life. So I definitely think a mid-year freakout tag can be a good, you know, severing point, a good cutoff for manifesting a much better second half of the year, fingers crossed. But anyway, the whole reason you're here, uh, the questions. So the very first question uh, doesn't waste any time. It's the best book I've read so far this year. I think I'll say maybe objectively what I think was the best was The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvignere. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I think this was long listed for the International Booker, if I'm even remembering that right, for earlier this year. And uh, I didn't have much expectations other than knowing it was kind of a mystery, but I was really surprised with how much I loved this book. It really reads like a mystery slash thriller, but it has all the careful care of like talking about characters that reminded me a lot of something like a Virginia Woolf novel. Each character feels like purposeful and intentional, and I liked all of them to some degree, and I never felt like I had to necessarily like pay attention to like it being a whodunit, or I guess who is going to do it, because the book is actually uh, very like in real time. So it is really only within a span of a few hours, even though the book is like 500 pages long. But yeah, it was a wild ride and I would really love to reread it eventually, but I had a really great time with that. But another book I wanna mention is The Happy Couple by Nisha Dolan, which if you're not new here, uh, you would know that I really love Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, so I was really looking forward to this book, and I really liked it. I don't think it's as good as Exciting Times, but I like what Dolan does with having to juggle more characters this time. Even if they all have like relationship troubles, and maybe I don't know if I just loved it so much based on my own personal, uh, that tumultuous section I mentioned, uh, earlier. Yeah, I really liked this. It's just as funny and the humor is just as spot on as exciting times to me while still feeling really like earnest and all the characters feeling like they have something to say. But my favorite part of the book, or one of the favorites at least, is this really funny moment where there's a wedding and a character asks the DJ like, hey, play a Mitski song, which is like totally me. And the DJ's like, Mitski's not wedding music. And then the character's like, play Mitski. So yeah, really loved those two books. And the second question is the best sequel I've read this year. And I've only read one. And that was the book two in the My Struggle series by Carl Ove Knosgaard. I promise I haven't changed too much since you guys like don't see me as much on booktube, but I know, you know, it's, it's a little daunting, this very like prestigious series about just this single, or yeah, this single white straight man. Well, I don't know, it's just really endearing and I think I really undermined or underestimated the like emotional punches of this series so far because book one was one of my favorite books of last year and book two is shaping up to probably be one of my favorites of this year so far at least. So yeah, if you've ever been like wishy-washy on maybe starting this series uh, that feels very like self-congratulatory, it's actually very like tender and sweet while not like pandering at all, which is kind of the worry I had when starting the series. But if anything, I might relate it to the like emotional rigor or like my intensiveness about it as to how I felt whenever I read something like the Neapolitan novels by Elena Ferrante, which as you know, uh, if you've watched me for a while, you know, is a pretty big statement. Question three, a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. And I figured I'd just name one that I know is released already. And that's Monsters, A Fan's Dilemma by Claire 
Diderer. I feel like with this, it would really scratch the nonfiction itch I have, where it might be just as satisfying as whenever earlier this year, I read The Right to Sex, which was, I thought was amazing. So I feel like that's like a nice companion that this might be. Uh, they're clearly unrelated, but I feel like the way it's written might like feel very satisfying to me in the same way. So I've also heard good things about it, so I'm excited to read it. Meanwhile, question four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. One of these books is one I actually uh, have a ARC of already, and that's Roman Stories by Jumbo Lahiri. I am hit or miss with Jumbo Lahiri, unfortunately. I really love Interpreter of Maladies like many people do, and I cite it as a book that really got me into reading. Her other stuff, like Unaccustomed Earth uh, and The Namesake, I thought those were okay. I don't really see the magic in those at all, but I've read one story from Roman Stories so far, and I think it comes out this fall, I think in October, but I liked it, so I hope I like the rest. For a book I don't have uh, an advanced copy of, but maybe, uh, hopefully I do eventually, is Blackouts by Justin Torres. This is getting a lot of like uh, more hype than I thought because I think Justin Torres wrote We the Animals, which I know had like a little bit of cult status with readers, but was never a book that I thought like was, you know, a must read kind of thing. So I'm loving the resurgence of Justin Torres. I've never read We the Animals, but I'm excited to read this. Uh, or else I feel like my gay card is gonna get taken away. Number five, biggest disappointment, and that is easily Big Swiss by Jen Began. I don't know, like, what, like, they need to give that marketing team a raise because I read this and I thought it was just fine. I don't really see the appeal of why it was so relevatory to a lot of people. Um, it is a little funny at some parts and its pacing is really nice, I think. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I don't really get it. I don't get the hype at all. Uh, so yeah, uh, try to enlighten me, please, about why it was so good. <laughs> Number six, biggest surprise, and I would say The Employees by Olga Rabin. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too, but with this one, I always knew it as like a similar, like a very hyped book, but it was sort of like science fiction based a little, and I don't really do too well with those kinds of books, but I really liked this one, and I know that she has another work coming out later this year, I think, uh, which I guess I could have also mentioned with the previous question. But yeah, unlike Big Swiss, uh, if you've heard good things about the employees and you want to try it out, I'd really recommend it. It's pretty short, but it really packs a punch and left me thinking about a lot. Number seven is favorite new author, debut or new to me, and that's definitely Vigdis Hajorth. I read Long Live the Post Horn earlier this year, which is one of her backlist, and shortly after I read that, it was announced that she was long listed for one of her more recent books for the uh, international booker. But that's the only one I've read by her. I really like her writing style and it feels like pensive and thought-provoking while still inviting. A lot like Sigrid Nunez. I think Sigrid Nunez is a little more playful and I really like Sigrid Nunez too, but I would say Big Sajorth is in that kind of similar vein. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to read more of her stuff in the future. Number eight is newest fictional crush and I of course have to give that to Luke from The Happy Couple. It really makes me want to rewatch and reignite my favorite fictional fuckboys video, so he would definitely be on there. Uh, Nisha Dolan's really good at that. A little too good, uh, like she's been watching my love life. Maybe in a similar vein, uh, question nine is newest favorite character. And it's so weird I say this because I thought the book was fine, but I really enjoyed reading it but it's Robert from The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. I'll just let you read The Shards yourself, but uh, Robert, like many characters in this book, are just like a stupid, horny high schooler. But Robert is so funny, and I don't even know if Brett Easton Ellis meant to write him as funny as I think he is, but in one moment, Robert will be yelling at somebody, but then he's accidentally like flirting with them. What other buzzwords did I write about him? I looks like I wrote things like manipulative, and gaslighty, okay, just those two, uh, which I think says a lot about me. But I don't know how to explain it. If you just read the book, like, I think Robert is so funny, maybe like unintentionally so, or maybe something's just wrong with me. So you should probably read the book and tell me later. Number 10 is a book that made me cry. And I don't really cry at books, but I think the saddest book, which is kind of like a alternate version of this question, is when I read Death Valley by Melissa Broder. With Melissa Broder's The Pisces, I really loved that and was my first introduction to her work. And then I read Milk Fed, which I thought was fine, but 
Death Valley feels like this nice hybrid, but what I love about Melissa Broder's characters being like these very defeated and desperate and depressed people, which I don't mean that in like a, like a masochist way, but just how I think they are really earnest people that really want to either like be good or just like want life to be really nice to them. And that's how it feels here. Like I feel so much sympathy for the character in Death Valley, even though I feel like Death Valley is Melissa Broder's weakest work. I really love the emotional sentiments and as well as emotional restraint. I think Broder's always really good at that, uh, packing in just the right amount of emotion in her stories. So yeah, I'd say Death Valley. Number 11 is a book that made me happy and that's definitely Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is literally just 30 Rock, like the show, but a novel. And surprisingly at times it's just as funny, I think, like on paper, not even having to hear it out loud. But I don't know, the situations of this book were like really sweet and as the name implies, very romantic to me. At the same time, in a very strange way, it does feel sort of realistic with the dialogue and how people react to what they say to each other. I'm really excited for this next question. It's the best or the most beautiful book I have acquired or maybe was given to me this year and I have it. It's whenever I was visiting my friend uh, in Alabama a few months ago. In the bookstore, they always have a really good, well-curated section, but this is an edition of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. But if you just flip it, then it becomes The Hours by Michael Cunningham. So let's just take a moment. If you've read both books, you understand the like power and symbolism of this edition because while reading Mrs. Dalloway, Michael Cunningham years later made The Hours, which is basically an homage slash somewhat continuation of Mrs. Dalloway in which there are certain elements that reflect real life while also reading the book, Mrs. Dalloway, in the hours. Please don't click away yet because the video is almost over anyway. But yeah, for a book where even Mrs. Dalloway isn't my favorite Virginia Woolf, it's actually probably my least favorite Virginia Woolf, to be honest. I feel like people just need to read The Waves and To the Lighthouse to really, you know, bump those up a bit more. I just really love this book and I can't wait to reread it. Uh, you know, either side, I think, is really beautiful with the cover. So it's really sweet and really pretty to look at. And the last question is, what books do I need to read by the end of the year? And at this rate, uh, I feel no impulse to really read right now because um, I haven't been reading for the past couple of months, really. So I don't know, just whenever it feels right, um, as always. And I actually do want to be conscious of this next bit, and I do want to actually tag people to do this tag. I would normally tag Yenna from Modern Ajima and Nathan from Nathan's Nook, but I know that they already did this video like within the past few days, so they beat me to it. But if you haven't watched their videos yet, I'll link them down below because they're really enjoyable. I also tag Eric, uh, Eric Carl Anderson, our resident booktuber. I know he did the mid-year check-in tag, which is like a alternate version of the freak out tag, but Eric, we need to see you freak out, you know? And answer the slight variations of these questions, maybe. I'd also love tagging dear bookish friend Matthew at Matthew Sharapa. And also, when I think of Matthew, I think of Claire. Um, so Claire, it's been a year since your last upload. So I'm giving you the chance, you know, a return. You know, this would be a good time. So also Pato and Lucy, I'd really love to see their answers to this. Uh, two great booktubers, but also great letterboxed users. Thinking of duos still, I have to tag CJ from CJ Reads and Jalen at Bar in the Bookcase, uh, namely because I just haunt their book clubs. So I feel like, you know, this is me returning the favor a little, being such great hosts as they are for their book clubs, but, you know, giving them a little tease to do the mid-year book freakout tag, so I'd really like to see their iteration of this. And of course, Ben at Doom Antido, um, I tagged him years ago in this because I loved his channel and I just found it, so this feels pretty full circle for Ben to do this again. And to prove I still watch BookTube and I'm, you know, catching up on maybe new people entering the community, uh, I really want to tag a new person that seems to be making new videos recently and I've really enjoyed them. And it seems like he's really getting into like the world of reading. So uh, it's really exciting to watch him just uh, read a bunch of books that he's interested in. And he recently did like a favorites video. 
which I'll also link down below. I think I'll just pick that one. But his name is Jacob Spunga, I think. That's how you say it. Sorry, Jacob, if you see this. But yeah, I'd really love to see him grow. Uh, he seems to be doing a very good job at it already. But uh, I really like his videos. He doesn't even edit them. He doesn't make any cuts, which is crazy. And yeah, that should be everything, I think, for this video, this little check-in, as I'm doing, as the name suggests, even though it's been months since you've seen me. But I think the next time I'll be back is, uh, to be honest, probably just uh, top reads of the year, assuming if I even read any more. Uh, but that's what I said earlier this year, and then I ended up reading 50 books so far. So who knows? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.